Earlier today, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo made a major announcement, formally announcing that China is committing genocide and crimes against humanity and its actions against the Uyghur Muslims and other religious minorities. What does this mean? How significant of an announcement is this on the eve of uh, the Biden administration taking over Washington, D.C. and the State Department? We're here to talk about it as well as the policy initiatives we can expect from the Biden administration is Travis Weber. He is a senior vice president of policy and government affairs here at the Family Research Council. Travis, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Tony. All right, Travis, what is significant about Secretary of State Pompeo's announcement today declaring that China is committing genocide and crimes against humanity? Yeah, a number of things are significant about this statement. First, it's we are the first country to declare that what China is doing to the Uyghur minority in Xinjiang is a genocide, so leading the way. Secondly, the, desi- the, the genocide designation is very significant, both from a moral and legal perspective, because it will obligate and increase the pressure on the United States and others to act against China. Uh, while certainly there's been a lot of attention on China And we recognize, many recognize that what China is doing to its minorities there is tragic. The genocide finding that uh, that most serious of international human rights violations adds an additional level uh, uh, layer of weight morally and legally to the obligation to prevent and punish, get involved and do something and act against China. So incredibly significant, uh, both from the perspective of what this is going to obligate the Biden administration and others going forward, in addition, making the point, uh, you know, leading the way as the first country to designate what's going on as a genocide. Yeah, I want to underscore what you said about uh, the significance of the term genocide. Uh, Some might remember or recall back during the Obama administration uh, when there was a push to call what was happening uh, in parts of Iraq uh, as um, genocide and what we saw in the Middle East with some of the uh, the population. And they were slow to do it. They finally did it after Congress uh, made that move. Um, but that restricts some of the, it just, it, it shapes how we deal with China in many ways. And, and I think this is uh, quite significant because this is either going to have to be overturned by the Biden administration or abided by. Right. So it's, it's either going to be reversed or, or, I mean, they could try to ignore it, but the fact is it's still there. You know, genocide is very significant. We go back to the genocide convention following the Holocaust, World War II, and uh, Secretary Pompeo's finding today made reference to going back to the Nuremberg trials, so tracing the history of how we got here, holding people to account for genocide. But we go back to the genocide convention in which the United States is a party post-World War II, finding in that, that convention – uh, the parties binding themselves to undertake to prevent and punish the crime of genocide and then define the crime of genocide, the intent to destroy and hold apart an ethnic, racial, religious group by killing or other steps, including uh, taking measures to, to prevent births within the group, which the secretary statement made reference to going on in Xinjiang. So right. clearly a significant finding Um, tracing the important history of this and marking, putting out a marker for the United States this moment. I really hope that President, incoming President Biden takes action on this. We have to uh, wait and see. Well, Secretary Pompeo has been uh, tough on China. Uh, I know that uh, from his policies and just in my conversations with him, uh, focused on them like a laser because of their abuses of human rights. Uh, Let's transition, uh, Travis, to what we can expect in terms of the policies of the Biden administration. We had the the minority whip Steve Scalise on earlier, uh, you know, touching on some of the issues. But we're expecting a blitz in the first 10 days of executive order action by the Biden administration, basically unilateral action by him undoing executive orders from the Trump administration. But beyond that, he's going to have to join with Congress while he has the House and he has a majority in the Senate. Uh, some of his policy initiatives may be difficult to get all the way through. No, that's very true, Tony. I mean, the I think we can expect a number of things to be occurring on issues of importance to Family Research Council. We have the memo that has been now talked about in the press, the 10-day blitz and kind of overview of issues in that memo. 
there, you know, the memo talks a lot about climate policies, uh, racial equity, um, immigration related issues, um, you know, and attempts to to try to get at uh, a job and trade related matters as well. We'll see what happens and we'll see how much of that actually takes place within the first uh, 10 days. I mean, it's good. There's going to be a lot they're going to try to push through. More broadly, though, we know because of what Biden has pledged he would he would do that there's going to be a significant uh, level of action against human life, against human dignity, as he rolls back a lot of the good policies that have been placed, put in put in place by President Trump, who who had been reinstating and expanding a lot of what President Bush and Reagan had done. Um, you know, we know the number of good pro life policies because we talked about it here a lot. But we can expect Biden to roll a lot of this back, as he stated he's going to do. The other big area we can expect movement on is him pushing to do the bidding of the LGBT community as he pushes uh, those uh, issues in a number of areas of federal law and executive policy and to include an impacting on religious freedom and, and significant um, uh, you know, guts, gutting of religious freedom in a number of areas. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to expect action in all those areas. We'll wait and see. I think two of the items that have been talked about is, is Biden looking to reverse President Trump's transgender military policy and to uh, reinstate President Obama's school bathroom policy. So we'll wait and see what happens. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a lot coming down the pike. Yeah, and that first one we were very involved in uh, when President Trump came into office, just looking at the financial uh, implications of that policy of having – uh, members of the military that were um, not able to be deployed because they were taking medication for, uh, you know, hormone treatments or had surgeries, whatever. I mean, it was just such a waste of federal money to to allow people to join the military in order to get transgender treatment. I mean, that is not the purpose of our nation's military. And then, of course, indoctrinating our children with this radical agenda uh, by forcing this on schools. And I think that's going to be one of the first things that you're going to see out of the Biden administration is uh, pushing this on to schools in America. It's what Obama did on his way out. Biden will do on his way in. In fact, we're going to talk more about that tomorrow. But there's there's more special interest groups. Planned Parenthood uh, pushing very hard. In fact, I've, I've got their uh, document, First Priorities, Executive and Agency Actions. And, and they say this, on day one, the president must issue an executive order unequivocally stating his commitment to protect and expand access to comprehensive reproductive health care, uphold sexual and reproductive rights, including abortion care, wow, that's a misnomer, in the U.S. and around the world, and rescind or revoke prior executive actions limiting access to care. And it goes on to state what that executive order must do. I mean, they're first in line, and there's no doubt Joe Biden is beholden to the abortion industry. You know, Tony, I think this is very instructive for the implications of a Biden presidency compared to the alternative pro-life Republicans and pro-family Republicans running to protect religious freedom. We're going to now, unfortunately, see some of the cost of this. And what you just referenced is a pledge and signed by not only Planned Parenthood, but dozens and dozens of pro-abortion organizations, credibly radical in this issue. And basically imagine how, you know, creating the most radical pro-abortion policies to the point of sounding insane that you can get, and you put them on paper and ask the president to, to implement them. But they have uh, pages and pages of asks and requests right. that they would like to see implemented on the, on abortion. And not, not right. only them, but you have other groups. You have this, um, you have the, the Democratic Women's Caucus sending a letter to the incoming administration asking for a number of pro-abortion and radically expansive policies in the area of sexuality. You have groups looking to take religious freedom out of the public square, and you have groups looking to push radical LGBT policies as well. So a number of outside groups now are going to come in, ask Biden to do their bidding, and and unfortunately we're in a position now where, where that's going to be the unfortunate, more likely cost of where we're at. And I think people need to really notice this when they think about the implications of their political involvement or yes. lack of involvement. Yes, very, yeah, great point. But just a, just a couple of the things here on a very extensive list that Planned Parenthood and, as you mentioned, dozens of other pro-abortion organizations in the Hyde Amendment, I mean, they are going... This is not just about undoing what the Trump administration did. They're going back literally decades uh, to, I mean, eliminate the Weldon Amendment, which goes back, I believe, to the turn of the century. I mean, it's been around 20 years or so. 
um, which uh, it deals with um, forced funding of uh, abortion yeah. and health care plans. Um, I think, what, and, and it includes, uh, ex, does it include experience, conscience rights? What, what all does the Weldon yeah. cover? Well, well, Tony, you remember Weldon was what President Trump enforced against the state of California for discriminating against health care right. entities by, by forcing them to um, cover abortions. And President Trump's HHS, HHS took action, withheld federal funds uh, for the action by California. But there's a number of federal conscience protections, federal statutes that uh, the Health and, or the Religious Freedom Division, HHS, and others within the administration have been enforcing. These groups want all of that to just go away. And I, I think, yeah. you know, if, if Biden takes them seriously, we are going to see them go away or they're going to attempt to, 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 to wipe them out, absent some sort of court intervention. Um, I think what's more likely is we see significant guts in in the pro-life actions that have been taken. And then we were fighting for any additional, uh, you know, um, uh, fighting for, for against any additional erosion of, of this area. Right, which uh, is, is quite aggressive in their agenda. We'll, we'll spend more time on that. But I want to get to another uh, policy proposal that will be coming very soon, and it's, uh, it's H.R. 1, meaning it's their top legislative priority. What does it do? Yeah, so, Tony, this is a, a bill that we have seen Democrats push over and over again, been reintroduced to this Congress now, the first days of this Congress, Nancy Pelosi leading the way on it. Imagine all the Democrats... Uh, election and voting reform measures that they want to 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 advantage to their advantage to push their their agenda through in that area packaged in one bill advance that's what we see in this bill um, forced a disclosure donor disclosure issues uh, areas that would really threaten free speech and the freedom of association uh, implications that would threaten the um, the religious speech of of pastors similar to issues around the Johnson Amendment. Um, and a number of other think problem problematic areas regarding election and uh, and voting reform that the Democrats they have their reasons for wanting it through and so this is an incredibly important bill they're going to see move in the House in the coming weeks probably next week and uh, and then you know we'll see what happens in the House but and they go to the Senate and. And we could see a Biden trying to sign it into law. So we'll really have to keep our eyes. This, this is very similar to what happened in California when when the California legislature went to the Democrats and they gained a supermajority. They then changed the election laws. That's where they created the only state to do it, legal ballot harvesting, uh, which then we saw the, the effect of that in 2018 when they flipped a number of Republican House seats. And remember, those went on weeks after the election because they were counting ballots that had been brought in. And that was done, quote unquote, legally because they changed the law. That's the kind of stuff we're looking at here. Yeah, Tony, I mean, this imagine, you know, this is a, a grab federal power grab in the area of elections trying to really federalize the entire system, take it out of the hands of the states. And as we've seen with a lot of the re- recent discussion on election integrity, we need states to occupy their rightful role and really take action. But here you have Congress purporting to take the power to establish independent redistricting commissions, um, you know, setting forth their their desired uh, uh, protocols on election security, intelligence sharing, campaign spending, campaign funding. So you know, it's just a real, it's a grab bag. And this is only one of the problematic areas we talked about, uh, you know, the abortion-related issues, religious freedom issues. There are other groups that are looking to, to now use the Democrat-controlled House, the Biden presidency, to push their, their agendas through. We really are going to need to keep an eye on a lot of this. Yeah, without question. Travis Weber, thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Great to talk with you.